But 1 Corinthians 13 and 4 says what? I'm summarizing it. Love is patient, kind, trust, and endures. As a soldier, he had to trust what? That the team would not leave him behind. Hallelujah. He had to trust that when his wife needed something that he could provide. Um, I think about him being an advocate for homeless veterans. And um, I think about uh, the scripture is uh, Matthew 8, 20, where it talks about how Jesus had nowhere to lay his head. And so Alvin kind of understood that, but I understand that as well. We had nowhere to lay our head, but we kept fighting the good fight. We expected the team, the team gonna show up. The team, Holy Ghost, Jesus, and the Father, what, showed up, hallelujah. So don't forget about being a team, y'all. Don't forget, I'm thinking because I hear God saying something when I look down like that. Uh-huh. You cared about the least, the lost, and the left out. Don't walk past nobody anymore. Y'all heard it. Don't let this be the last day that they see you. Don't let this be the last day that they hear from you. So trust, that's another balloon I'm floating. Can God trust you? Can God trust you that when you tell this family, I'm going to be there, will you be there? She said, Alvin never did what? He never broke a promise. So can God trust you, those of you that are hearing today, that when she needs you, that you will try your best to be there for her? Hallelujah. 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 Yes. For the members of this family, wherever you are, I want you to raise your hands. The members of this family, raise your hand and raise it, raise it high. All y'all. <laughs> amen, 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 amen. Keep them raised, keep them raised. Hallelujah, keep them raised. Bless you, God bless you. Look, she's trying not to raise her hand. <laughs> God said to throw you off something today. You don't believe that God throws blessings? Hallelujah. He throws what? His love? That you can what? Trust and believe that it's going to be around? So keep your hands raised. Y'all trying to drop your hands. Like, you know, like Thomas said, keep your hands raised. Are y'all ready? And for those of you that are in the family, just start praying. I decree, meaning I make law, and I declare, meaning I'm announcing it. That's a public announcement. So I decree and declare that your walls will always be filled with happiness. I decree and declare that today will be the last day of the sadness. Hallelujah. I decree and declare that the walls of overflow shall flow through your houses. I decree and declare, hallelujah, that the abundance of rain will flow through your heart. I decree and declare, hallelujah, that the zeal of the Lord shall now fill your hearts in a new way. I decree and declare that he shall give you the strength for you feel that you are weak to move on. I decree and declare, hallelujah, that you will not let this be the last day that you are in God's house. Hallelujah. I decree and declare that you will continue to be a member of the team. Hallelujah. And I decree and declare God's overflow in your life. I decree and declare it is signed, sealed, and delivered in the blood of Jesus. And it can be taken back. Hallelujah. Celebrate. Hallelujah. Celebrate. 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 Hallelujah. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. And whither I go, ye know, and the way ye know. 
Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Let the church say amen. amen. Let's pray together. Father, would you take these next brief moments that we have together and remind us that we can't make it without you. I pray for this wife and these precious children. They're going to have to learn a new normal, traveling uncharted territory, but they are not alone. Would you comfort them like only you can? Thank you for the life. I thank you for what we heard that he knew the Lord Jesus as Savior. That makes all the difference in the world. And I pray, God, you continue to bless in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to draw your attention to the Lord Jesus Christ statement in verse number one. I want you to notice that he said, ye believe in God. James said that the, the devils believe in God and they tremble. Amen. You know, there are a lot of people believe in God. Mm -hmm. But just believing in God won't get you to heaven. That's right. Jesus said, believe also in me. In other words, you can't separate the two. If you don't believe in the Father, you better believe in the Son. If you don't believe in the Son, you better believe in the Holy Ghost. I'm learning in this day and age, there are a lot of people that don't have a problem mentioning God's name, but they have a problem mentioning Jesus' name. Jesus said, believe also in me. And in these next few days and months and years, there'll be a lot of people around you that will help encourage you. There'll be a lot of good circumstances that will help pick you up. There'll be poems and words and thoughts and deeds that will help push you through. But above all those things, what will gird you up the most is this. You believe in Jesus. He makes the difference. Keep holding on. Keep trusting him. When Jesus said these words in John 14, it's important for us to understand for about three and a half years he'd been on planet earth. He walked, he talked, he made the lame to walk again, the deaf to hear, the dumb to speak, the blind to see, the lepers were cleansed, the debtors were forgiven, the storms were calmed, the 5,000 were fed with one lunch. He walked on water. He appeared and, and then disappeared. He did what no other man could do. And then he said to the disciples, I'm leaving. They were worried. They were nervous. They were distraught. And they were afraid that this man that they knew and that they trusted was leaving them. The condition they were experiencing. Perhaps you're feeling some of that today. Crippled by fear. Concerned about failure. Confused about your future. By the way, fear is not from God. It's from the devil. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. And the natural man is going to be afraid. How can I go on without my husband? How can I go on without my father? How can I go on without my friend? How can I make it? I'll tell you how you can make it. Believe also in him. Did you notice the comfort? He said, I'm leaving. But I'm going somewhere. Look at verse number two. In my father's house. How many are thankful? that what happens here doesn't affect what happens there. Aren't you glad that heaven's doing all right? Aren't you glad that there's a place that Jesus called my father's house? There's a place where there's no dying. There's a place where there's no sorrow. There's a place where there are no tears. By the way, in heaven, there are no doctors, no hospitals, no medicine, no nursing home, no insulin, no chemotherapy. In my father's house, it's a special place. In my father's house, it's above. It's apart from the world. In my father's house, it's not only a special place, but there's some supernatural preparation there. I go to prepare a place for you. By the way, we live in a society where there are people that don't have a place to sleep on planet Earth. But I'll tell you, everybody's got a place in heaven. I go to prepare a place for you. Jesus said, I'm 
going to prepare a place. And by the way, nobody will build a mansion like Jesus built a mansion. Aren't you glad that the day he got to heaven, he breathed his last breath here, and he entered the glories of heaven, that there was a mansion there waiting for him, not built by angels, not built by other Christians, but built by the Lord Jesus Christ. I go to prepare a place for you. It's a special place with a supernatural preparation. But he said, I'll give you a sure promise. I will come again. And I'm going to tell you something. I don't care what anybody tells you. Jesus is coming again. I said, Jesus is coming again. One day, there were times in the Bible he sent angels. There were times in the Bible he sent messengers. But when he comes back to take us to heaven, he's not sending an angel. He's coming back himself. I will come again. He's going to return. He's going to receive us. By the way, the trumpet's going to sound. The dead in Christ is going to rise first. You realize Adam's going to get up, and that body's going to put on incorruption, and that mortal's going to put on immortality, and in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, he'll be called together to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. You say, I'm going through trials, Pastor. I'm going through difficulties. By the way, you're either in a trial, coming out of a trial, or headed for a trial. Everybody's got birds, everybody's got problems. I've never seen so much death, and turmoil, and tension, and hatred. By the way, you've seen the news lately? This world isn't getting better. But you know what I'm excited about? We're going to be here forever. One day the trumpet's going to sound. We're going to get out of here. And he's going to take us to heaven. So don't look down. Look up. Amen. And one more. I'm going to finish. The condition they were experiencing. The comfort that was extended. And then Jesus, the certainty he embodied. Lord, we don't know the way. And how can we know? Pretty good question, buddy. And aren't you glad that Jesus knew how to answer the question? I am. I want you to notice those two words. Say them with me. I am. I am. Say it again. I am. I am. Notice he didn't say I was. And he didn't even say in this verse, I will be. By the way, tomorrow he will be. But how many of you know, you're not, you don't need him tomorrow, you need him today. I am. I am. I am the being of supernatural existence. Here's what I want you to be assured of today. Right now, while you need him, I am, he says. Tomorrow, when you get there, guess who you will be? I am. Next week, when nobody's around, guess who will be there? I am. A month from now, when you're still burdened about it, guess who will be there? I am. In the midnight hour, when you wake up and you look for your loved one and he's not there, guess who will be there? I am. Five years from now, when you can't predict what's going to happen, Guess who'll be there? I am. Remember Moses standing in front of that burning bush? And he said, what shall I tell them? And who shall I tell them sent me? You know what God said to him? I am that I am. I'm glad that he's a present God. He's there when we need him. He's there when we don't know what we're facing. He's not the I was or the I will be. He's I am. He's the being of supernatural existence. Then he used three words. I am what? I'm the way. I'm the bridge to salvation experience. You know what that means? You can't get to God unless you go through Jesus Christ. Not Muhammad, not Buddha, not the Pope, not a priest, not never. You've got to go through Jesus Christ. I'm the way. And he said, I'm the truth. I'm not only the bridge of salvation experience. I'm the body of all substantial evidence. Everything that's true emanates from the Lord Jesus Christ. They shall know the truth, and the truth shall set them free. Pilate looked at Jesus and said, what is truth? You know what Jesus could have said? You're looking at it. Oh. I'm the truth. Then he said, I'm the life. From the breath of spiritual essence. In him we live, we breathe, we have our being. There is no life outside of Jesus. You say people are breathing every day. Yeah, they're living, but they don't have a life. Amen. You don't start living until you meet Jesus. Amen. The thief coming to steal, to kill, and destroy. John chapter 10. But Jesus said, I am come. There it is again. I am. And once in a while, go back and look in the Bible and everything that Jesus said, I am. I am the door. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the light. I am the good shepherd. Amen. I'm glad that what we need, I am the resurrection and the life. I am he that liveth and uh, that died and rose again. I'm the way. I'm the bridge of salvation experience. I'm the truth. I'm the body of substantial evidence. I'm the life. I'm the breath of spiritual existence. And don't forget that little word. I am the. I'm the bottom line of settled exclusiveness. By the way, he didn't say I'm a way. He didn't say I'm a truth. He didn't say I'm a life. He said I'm the way. I'm the truth. I'm the life. You can't get to heaven unless you go through Jesus. Maybe you're sitting here today, boy. I feel like those disciples. 
How am I going to make it? What am I going to do without him? What are they going to do without him? What are we going to do without him? I'll tell you what you're going to do. You're going to believe in Jesus. Don't you forget. You're not alone. I promise you, people will fail you. You know why? Because they're people. You know what I promise you? He'll never fail you. Hold on to God's unchanging hand. And by the way, if you're here today, I'm not asking what church you're going to go. What baptism or pool you got wet in. I'm not asking what family you're born in. Those may be important things to you, but none of them get you to heaven. None. And by the way, I can't preach someone that's dead in the heaven or out of hell. That decision is made by what that person does with Jesus Christ. And there's only one person. That can wash your sins away. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Aren't you glad that the gospel is good news? He died according to the scriptures. He was buried. He was raised again according to the scriptures. Scarcely for a righteous man, some would die yet prevention for a good man, some would even dare to die. But God committed his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that those who believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life and he had made him to be sent for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him for by grace are you saved through faith and the not of yourselves it is the gift of God not of works as any man should boast therefore if any man be in Christ he's a new creature all things are passed away behold all things are become new and I give unto them eternal life that they shall never perish neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand I am the resurrection and the life he that believeth in me though he were dead yet shall he live for as much as we know we are not redeemed with corruptible things of silver and gold from the vain conversation received by the tradition of your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish and without spot. He's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance who have all been to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus, and he is the propitiation by our sins and not for our sins only, but for the sins of the whole world. Thank God for Jesus. Amen. You're here today. And there's a lot of people that tell you a lot of things about a lot of good people. But I'm telling you what, you better get this one thing right about this one person. You better believe in him. He makes the difference. If you're here today and you've never accepted Christ as your Savior, get it right while you have to. Don't, one of the reasons why we open our doors to have funerals for people, because it gives us a chance to tell them about Jesus. Amen. And some of them might not make it here on Sunday, but we'd be glad to tell them on Thursday. Amen. So that maybe they'll think twice on Sunday. Amen. We may not get some of you at church, but I hope if you never come back to Crossroads, I hope to see you in heaven. And I promise you, if I see you there without even talking to you, I know how you got there. You got there through the way, the truth, the light, because ain't no other way to get there. Amen. And may God help us. May God help this family, every one of these children. He is a friend to the friendless, a father to the fatherless, and you didn't get this far without him, and bless God, you won't have to continue without him. He didn't bring you this far to leave you now. Amen. You hang in there by the grace of God, and may God continue to help sustain you Amen. by believing also Amen. in Jesus. Let's bow our heads. I want to talk to the living. Listen to me. Uh, from where Alvin is in heaven, <coughs> he doesn't need this message. Who in the world would need to hear me preach when they're up there with Jesus? <laughs> the service is for the living. The question is, what have you done with Jesus? <laughs> you remember when those theologians and those politicians met Jesus with all these questions? Political questions and social questions? And he turned to them, so let me ask you a question. What think you of Christ? You ask a lot of questions. Let me settle it down with one question. What do you think about Jesus? Because that one question will determine whether you go here <laughs> or down there. I ask you, do you know the Lord? Maybe you're in the building and say, Pastor, I'm, I'm not 100% sure if I die today I'll go to heaven, but I'm sure I don't want to go to hell. But that's a pretty smart choice. Nobody should want to go to hell. 
Somebody told me, I'm, I'm not going to hell. I don't believe in it. I said, everybody there does. Just because you don't believe it doesn't mean it's not true. And you will remember this message. She just said, you're conscious there. You will remember. But you don't have to go. Jesus already paid your price. You're here today. You're not sure you're going to heaven, but you're sure you don't want to go to hell. In the quietness of your heart, I want you to bow and close your eyes. You say, Pastor, I don't know I'm going to heaven. But because I know I don't want to go to hell, I'm willing to pray right now. In the quietness of my heart. And ask the Lord to forgive me of my sins and save me. Aren't you glad that heaven is one club that anybody can get in? Amen. Some of these elite clubs, you got to have the right kind of money, the right kind of status, the mm -hmm. right kind of fingerprints. Listen, everybody gets in on somebody else's behalf. Mm -hmm. His name is Jesus. Amen. Your quietness of your heart right there, if you're willing to pray and say, Lord, but you hear my last words, Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I'm separated from you. But I believe you died for me. And you rose again. As best as I know how, I'm putting my faith and trust in Jesus Christ. And asking him to forgive me. I repent of my sins and accept him as my Savior. And by the way, nobody can ask this for you. You got to ask for yourself. Please save my soul. In Jesus' name. Now keep your head bowed now. Close just a minute. You say, Pastor, from sincerely in my heart, I prayed that prayer, but it wasn't just a prayer with my mouth. It was a prayer from my heart. I asked the Lord to forgive me and to save me, and based on his word, I believe he answered. If that's you, would you slip your hand up? Slip your hand up if you pray. Don't be embarrassed. Thank you. I see your hand. 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 I see your name. By the way, guess what the Bible says? There's joy in the presence of angels yes. when one sinner repent. Now, I just yes. count about seven. If they if they rejoice up there, you yes. reckon we all rejoice down here? Amen. 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 Celebrate. Amen. Amen. Somebody's not going to hell. Hallelujah. Somebody's going to heaven. Hallelujah. Somebody else is going to see Alvin again. Yes. Yes. And most of all, we're going to see Jesus. And if you're in here and you say, I'm already going to heaven, take some people with you. Amen. Amen. And if you're going to heaven, don't live like you're going to hell. Amen. Live for God. Worship Him. Get in a church somewhere. Read your Bible. Pray. Well, the world's getting wicked. Show them what not being wicked is. Amen. You believe in Jesus. Belief is only that which moves you to action. If you believe right, guess what? You ought to behave right. By the grace of God. Father, would you bless your word? You promise it will never return for you. And I pray, God, that it won't. It will accomplish its purpose. I pray for this precious wife who spoke today. None of us know what she's dealing with. But you do. And I pray, God, that you would magnify your own name. You say that tribulation worketh patience. You are building her faith and the entire family. And for these hands that went up a few moments ago, we thank you that in Alvin's death, these souls just received life. Yes. And not just eternal life for after they die, but abundant life while they're alive. Yes, Jesus. Okay. Thank you for every word about you and about your word that's already been shared. Now may we not just leave here stirred, but changed. And may we keep looking up in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen and amen. amen. Let the church say amen. amen. stars you're bigger than the things oh 
that could tear me apart You're bigger than the universe You're bigger than the sun and the stars You're bigger than the things, oh my, oh my That could tear me apart 